Uh, Preeti, we've begun. Great. Thanks, Rashi. Yeah, I wasn't sure how to look at the countdown clock. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the Future of Gender Cha-Cha track. Really, really pleased to welcome all of you uh, joining from different places. We're just about to start. And uh, big thanks to the Nudge Foundation for putting this incredible event together. I believe, again, in record time, much like last year, which we will be hosting over a couple of days. Um, I'm Preeti Rao. I'm senior advisor at Dalberg, uh, which some of you may have heard of is an, a global impact advisory firm. Uh, we work out of 20 different offices around the world on numerous development uh, topics. Um, and today we are really, really pleased to be a co-host uh, to the Charcha event. And at Dalberg, I mean, just by way of introduction, you know, uh, diversity, gender, equality and inclusion is not just a uh, a mission for us in an area we work in, but a value that we really hold ourselves accountable to at the firm. Uh, you know, at, at Dalberg, uh, much of our leadership is people of color, uh, women of color, and, uh, you know, we, we sort of want to walk the talk uh, as much as we can, and it's not easy always, but uh, we're really committed to it and also bringing the gender lens across all of the work that we do, whether that be financial inclusion, energy, uh, healthcare, and so on. And uh, and today, uh, you know, sort of uh, just from last year's charcha really was uh, the focus was understanding the impact of COVID, particularly on women and girls uh, across the country. And, uh, you know, since the charcha last year, we are we're very pleased to report that we've had a chance to really work alongside a lot of grassroots organizations, foundations, government uh, to really uh, not just understand, you know, how COVID has impacted uh, women and girls across India, but really sort of bring out uh, large kind of public data sets and insights, uh, you know, to inform policy making, whether that be in women's sort of participation in the workforce or uh, sort of the access to healthcare, education, safety, and so on. So, uh, so this year, you know, really uh, Charcha is going to be, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting moment because we are just about approaching the 75th year of Indian independence. So we wanted to really dedicate, uh, you know, a lot of this session to uh, not just reflecting back and placing gender in the broader historical context in the country, but also really looking forward uh, and expanding what it means uh, to even have these conversations, who are the people on the table in these conversations and so on. So uh, really, uh, you know, I'm just going to give you a very quick sort of snapshot of what to look, uh, look forward to and expect over the next couple of days. But uh, maybe Dion, we could just jump into the slide. Um, so this is really a brief uh, overview of, uh, you know, how we've sort of traveled over the last sort of, uh, you know, half a century or actually qu three quarters of a century, uh, all the way from, you know, sort of women gaining uh, property rights uh, in the country to dowry being made a criminal offense, all the way to today where, you know, transgender people are acknowledged uh, in their own right as well as most recently, the decriminalization of homosexuality, which is really a, a big thing for us. Um, so that's really been the snapshot. Uh, and women, of course, along the way have made, uh, you know, some social and political progress, uh, all the way from reducing, uh, sorry, increasing the voter participation, as well as uh, secondary school enrollment, to really a reduction in child marriages, uh, you know, across the years. Uh, moving to the next one. Uh, and, and yet, you know, despite this progress that we see, uh, there are still, you know, challenges. <clears throat> Primarily, uh, women's participation in the workforce, uh, you know, surprisingly actually has reduced over the years, which was actually a surprising stat for me as well. Uh, instead of seeing an increase in it, uh, our sort of political leadership continues uh, to be, you know, uh, much less representative of women with only 15% women in the Lok Sabha, as well as, you know, a lot of our corporate India as yet to have women as uh, leaders on their boards, uh, with that being just 17% right now. Uh, one of the sort of things that we've also chosen to highlight this year is particularly the state of uh, transgender, uh, third gender people across 
uh, the country who still continue to have a struggle just with gaining an identity. Uh, and in this case, just getting an Aadhaar card, which as we all know today is uh, uh, an important ticket to gain sort of welfare services uh, from the government, you know, very, very critical sort of essential services like rations and health and education. Um, so, and then, and I, you know, just by way of a personal story, um, you know, I, I, one of the most recent incidents that I sort of myself faced was, uh, you know, while being introduced uh, to, I'm, I'm sort of married to a bureaucrat and by way of introduction, I was introduced as a Mrs. Secretary, uh, which was quite amusing, but, uh, you know, instantly kind of uh, negated my 20 years of professional career in my own right. And, uh, you know, so it's not just gender at the lower levels, uh, the lower economic stratas. Uh, this is something that we continue to struggle in very hard ways as well as softer ways, uh, such as identity and so on. So, um, and, and, also, I think uh, during the COVID times, uh, you know, a lot of this has actually started to, all the gains that we've been making so far has slowed down and in some cases positively gone back. Uh, in one of the studies that Dalberg recently did, uh, you know, in partnership with the Gates uh, Ford Foundations, as well as the Rowan Indian Lekhani Philanthropy, we, we looked, we, we saw that, you know, one in four uh, women, uh, you know, sort of limited their food intake uh, during COVID and really worried about food sufficiency. So even if, you know, within the family, a lot of, uh, you know, these norms are much more gender forward today, women themselves uh, conform to a lot of these norms as well and sort of see themselves as the last priority you know, within the family. Their access to essentials, you know, such as contraception and sanitary pads were were reduced during this time, uh, which is again, you know, prevents them from uh, whether it's participating in its schools or, or work, etc. During during the uh, time during the month, uh, and as well as uh, you know, more women than men uh, had yet to sort of resume paid work during uh, uh, as a result of COVID. The other thing that was uh, something to highlight is nearly, uh, I mean, it's 99.8%, which is pretty much all of India's uh, transgender population, did not receive government uh, relief uh, during the sort of COVID times, uh, as a lot of the other sort of people did uh, in the same socioeconomic status. A lot of these were due to, due to identity discrimination and so on. So, so yes, gains have been made, and particularly in the legal judicial domains, However, you know, there are significant challenges that we still need to sort of uh, have solutions for and policies for. So, so really, uh, the next couple of days, we're really looking at, you know, what are some new, uh, not just pro products and programs or policies, but how do we even reimagine new mindsets, uh, you know, where uh, there is a world in which we value and accept people of uh, all genders and sexuality equally and create opportunities for them to thrive, right? What, what is that? What does that world look like? What kind of legal institutional systems do we need in place to have a much more inclusive environment uh, alongside even in products and programs? You know, how do we really sort of cater to the, to, to the big diversity uh, in this, in this uh, you know, topic? So, to the next one, yes. So really, as I said, you know, this year we are taking a moment to not just reflect on the last 75 years, but also really look forward, particularly to the aspirations of youth and future generations uh, in how do we kind of shape this, uh, not just the mindsets, but also really sort of tangible policies and programs that are much more forward looking. And as well as, uh, you know, broadening the conversation itself uh, from not just restricting ourselves to gender, but really including all genders and sexual minorities. Uh, as we said, we need to sort of have these uh, we need to broaden the space itself. And to that end, we're really thrilled to have an incredible list of, uh, sort of speakers and panelists, uh, you know, on board for the next couple of days, uh, all the way from activists like Dr. Padmashali to journalists like Kalpana Sharma, uh, lawyers like Saurabh Kirpal, and, as well as grassroots leaders, uh, such as Sushma Mohirle from, uh, you know, who's a Sarpanch in, uh, in a village in Maharashtra. And, you know, development sectors like uh, Sohini Bhattacharya from Breakthrough. So really uh, not just sort of 
having a broader conversation uh, and including more gender and sexual minorities, but also bringing a lot of more diverse voices to the table, um, as well as you know actually having diversity in the the presentation and the format itself, which my colleague uh, Diane and Sirath will take you through in a moment. And um, you know, with that, I really want to sort of take a moment to introduce Diane, who is uh, an associate partner at Dalberg and leads a lot of our gender work, uh, and Sirath, who is uh, you know a senior consultant as well as our global. A gender practice coordinator. So, you know, over to you, and they'll take you through the next couple of days. And hopefully, all of you will uh, leave inspired and uh, full of ideas to take some ideas forward. Dan? Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Preeti, for setting the stage for us. Um, Sirat and I are very excited to be your hosts for today. Um, over the next two days, as Preeti mentioned, we have such an exciting lineup of speakers and programming for you. We have five conversations, two today, three tomorrow, followed by a masterclass. So today, very shortly, we're going to kick off with exploring how the definition of gender has really changed since the independence and how we can create a more inclusive world for today's youth. Then we're going to follow that up by one-on-one -on -one fireside chats with some of the leading voices uh, sharing their lived experiences and lessons from three different fields, journalism, law, and the social sector, particularly in the very work of actually fighting for gender equity and inclusion. Then tomorrow, we're going to kick off the day by exploring how a women and individuals from gender minorities have used social spaces to amplify their voice. Then we're going to move on to discussing what more needs to be done for programs and policies to be more gender inclusive. In the afternoon, we're going to be exploring uh, and hearing experiences from women leaders in rural India as they're fighting for change within their communities. And our track will culminate in an interactive workshop prepared by our colleagues at Dahlberg and our four, uh, friends at Coro. And for that one, we kindly request that you register because it'll be an interactive session and we want to be uh, prepared for how many of you <laughs> will be there. So hope you can all join us and we'll uh, share the link in the chat box shortly as well. Um, and finally, we're delighted that this year we have two more sessions covering a gender. Um, co-hosted by some of our friends in the energy and health track tomorrow uh, afternoon. That's going to be mainstreaming gender across the energy value chain and periods don't pause for a pandemic. So hope many of you can join those sessions as well. So we're going to kick off very, very shortly, I promise. Um, but uh, before we do that, we would love to get a sense of who all are joining us in the audience. So Rashi, if you can uh, pull us up the poll, that would be fantastic. Rashi, is that possible? Hi, Dion. The poll is on. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Hope you can see the two questions. Uh, the first one is, what gender do you identify with? And the second one is, which of the following roles best describes you? And feel free to choose multiple. Rashi, feel free to close the poll whenever we have a good forum, and then we can share the answers. Getting a few more in on a few of them.
Excellent. Thanks, Rashi. Poll is now closed. Um, is it possible to flash the results of the poll on the screen for all of us? Yeah, I can actually briefly briefly talk you through them because I'm not sure I can flash the results. Um, based on the question of what gender identity do you identify with, um, we had 11% in the room um, as men, 77% as women, around 6% as trans men, uh, no trans women at the moment. We had 5% as queer uh, or gender non-conforming. Um, on the other poll of who is in the room in terms of their profession um, or their main work, 100% um, of the people in the room were development professionals. Uh, so we look forward to having a more diverse audience across the next couple of sessions and days. Yeah, yeah thank you so much, Rashi, for sharing the results. Um, we do also hope to see more men next time in these conversations, um, but really great to see some uh, gender uh, minorities also represented and absolutely would love to see more diverse professions going forward and hopefully uh, the conversations we start at Charcha in the next couple of days at the stage for that. So without further ado, I would like to just take a minute um, to get our speakers ready to begin our first session.